to leave our country and of course to leave my family and my friends because here in the Philippines you're not earning enough for it for my family and basically for myself I hoped at the beginning na sa Pilipinas ako kasi wala akong kapatid. So, the idea na makasweldo lang ako, ma-provide ko yung pangangailangan ng parents ko, okay na. Pero nung nakita ko yung opportunities abroad, tapos yung sitwasyon natin sa country natin, I decided to leave. Sacrificing your family, you're sacrificing lahat ng loved ones mo dito, yung mga happy moments mo dito. For you to go there, for you to earn money, for your family, parang sa, sa case ko po, yung sa son ko, iniwa ko siya dito for mga six months siya nun. It's important sa mom na makita mo yung baby mo na yung sabi niya, mommy, you're the first word, tapos yung mag-alakad siya. Pero, Tiniis ko po yun. I'd rather work there for his, ano, for his future. Uh, on top of their uh, main uh, motivation for, for living is, of course, um, economy. The health workers are in search of uh, decent work, meaning uh, uh, pay that will provide for their family, um, the, the conditions, the opportunities to grow professionally, and to also provide for, for, for the family. The health migration is just not like any migration of workers. Um, the reason being that uh, you're dealing with health, you're dealing with people. If we consider uh, the, uh, the European situation, there is uh, uh, calculation which are showing that uh, that in, in uh, 20 years time there is a rather big uh, in general shortage of healthcare professionals in, in, in Europe. Only recent years we have been receiving uh, migrants. It's a new phenomenon and um, uh, the migration is increasing and, and that's the fact is that we have a we are facing a shortage of trained personnel within a few years, already now actually. Uh, there has been a calculation that from the ministry that we need 20 to 60,000 workers more within in 20 years. So uh, one of the solution might be mi migration. If you look purely at the demographics in Europe and in many other developed countries, you can very easily project an increase in the need for health care because there will be a growing elderly population which will make much more demands on health care provision. So increased need for health care will be there. The current education system is not producing enough uh, professionals. This is because of the, of the fact that, that also the, the European health care professionals are moving to other countries like from Europe to, to, to America, and, and from Eastern Europe to Western Europe uh, and, uh, and, and so forth. This is really a very complex situation which is uh, seemingly going to continue and, uh, and we don't have uh, any, any good solution for that at the moment. Ever since I was a child, I dream of becoming a nurse. It was it's really my dream, my choice. And other students would 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 say that they have been forced by their parents to take up nursing. But I'm the type that chose nursing 
uh, as a profession. And then, uh, I love taking care of other people. I am, I find happiness when I'm doing nursing skills or when I, whenever I'm doing community work. I like dealing with people a lot. May pamilya na ako. So, for yung education ng mga anak ko, yung future nila. Kasi, yun lang yung paraan mo din eh, para mabigyan mo sila ng magandang buhay. O yung first reason siguro kasi, yung mother ko is an OFW din. Uh, bali nag-work na siya ng napakatagal na sa Middle East. So, gusto ko naman na umuwi siya, then ako naman yung mag-work para sa kanya. And we have a lot of nurses sa Pilipinas na wala din trabaho. And uh, we know kung gaano kahirap maghanap ng trabaho ang isang nurse sa Pilipinas. Why are you living? This is our first time. Why? Greener pasture. Greener pasture, of course. Number one reason is to send our children you know, to school. Number two, to build a dream house. When we talk of the health workforce and we talk of nurses' mobility, this has implications in many aspects of the healthcare system in the Philippines. So, out migration of nurses may mean on one end, a weaker health system because we're losing nurses going out to other countries. But on the other end, if we see the benefits of uh, out-migration, it returns some remittances. It also transfers technology. And those who have experience outside of the country and coming back provides an ideal concept of what a health system should be all about. Ethical recruitment is uh, making sure that the client and the candidate will have the same values, will have the same principle, they will respect each other. I still believe that what is ethical is something that is moral. Legality is what is legal doesn't mean it's ethical because if the government allows a legal placement fee of one month and uh, we charge them, it's legal. You know, we cannot be caught because we're doing legally. But is it ethical? I don't think so because we believe that still the candidate deserve the best employer without paying the recruitment company. Ethical recruitment does not really focus on profiting or gaining profit from the migrant. It does not exploit on the vulnerabilities just because people would like to, to work. We send our senior consultants, senior managers to visit those countries where these companies are make sure that uh, we meet them, we see their structure, we see if we have the same balance, the principles in business, how they treat their people, how, what is their accommodation. We do our investigation. We don't let the government do that for us because we are a proponent in market research and market penetration. And the most important thing for us is to penetrate that market and make sure that we have the right company. We have very, very seasoned consultants and managers that has the same knowledge in the industry that our clients are in to make the final interview and assess the quality of the candidate. We define the criteria, the, the timetables for recruitment and uh, every step uh, on the way until they become either licensed practical nurses in Finland or registered nurses here and it requires a lot of cooperation and often is based on a long-term uh, relationship with the employer. This is essential for, for the um, trust and also in order to make sure that uh, we truly understand one another and the workplaces that the recruits will be uh, placed into. We always have three parties uh, in the process and we also have a steering group for each process so that we can monitor the development of, of uh, the recruits. So there is uh, the employer, the client, us, the recruiter, and also uh, the institute or school that provides uh, the professional training in Finland. After a certain period of time, people graduate and then they are formally equipped for, for work in Finland. Recruitment agencies play, uh, play a key role in, you know, in the protection of our workers because they are the ones who recruit the workers so they are they're supposed to ensure that the terms and conditions of employment that will be offered by the employers 
are at par or even up if above uh, the minimum standard set by the PUA. So on the protection aspect, they really are the basic player in ensuring that the nurses will be living under decent terms and conditions of employment, ensuring the, that the nurses process the proper qualifications, technical competence that they need as, as required by the employers. We have been doing it uh, with the, for example, OPTEAM, the recruitment agency, and uh, they have given the information for the Filipinos when they arrived. So we were allowed to add things and, uh, for example, give information about trade unions. But I think that the, the timing of the information is difficult because we don't know enough about each other and each other's cultures to be able to, to tell about the trade union movement here in Finland. So we have to learn it. If somebody knows the way, it would be good. But uh, when we met uh, the Philippine, Filipino nurses, we used the help of a Filipino, knowing the, the Finnish situation. So that was our success. But uh, it's not easy. <laughs> Nung dumating kami dito, umuulan. Yan lang, medyo ano, nag-adjust kami sa weather. Sa language, syempre ang hirap kasi ng language. Tsaka yung tinuro sa amin din sa Pilipinas. Bahay na katulong din talaga yon. Maganda dito kasi safe siya na country, peaceful, may sistema. As long na mag-abide ka dun, you will never go wrong. Basta ayos ka lang. Pero you have to observe the rules. Kailangan namin mag-adjust. And they are not as open as we are. So, kailangan tangtsahin mo muna yung taong kausap mo. Hindi basta-basta inaasak. May asawa ka na, may anak ka na. Sa kanila medyo private. So, good na na-brief kami. Kasi hindi namin alam kung nakaka-offend na kami the way we speak, the way we act. Adjusting to a different um, environment. Yes, they have four seasons, but they have also four climates every day. We have um, patients ranging from zero to 110 years old. Trainings, you know, they call us up for study days, even for a as simple as operating the glucose machine. You have to undergo training before you, you, you're allowed to use it. We have mentors. That's the best thing that we had. They always follow us. They they advise us what to do. Hindi lang sa work side. Tinuruan din nila kami sa outside work, sa family matters, sa pag-intervene, bakit pag kapwa tao. Difficulties would be uh, the language, the different dialects we have, and of course the culture itself. The way Finnish people are, we are not the most talkative people but we could be friendly and we might like you even. We're not talking so much. Other difficulties could be the climate, the weather, having cold winters, a lot of snow. Um, it's a challenge uh, for us as well. <laughs> the work itself could be different than what you expect, the, the foreign nurses is expected. There might be a lot of uh, things they have not been doing before and they would have to learn to do when they're working in Finland.
I'm heading off to New York for uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital. Um, I'm gonna be working as a staff nurse in the surgical intensive care unit. Um, it's been seven years since since I applied for it the first time. Almost forgot about it, and somehow uh, the process of, of uh, or the visa process is actually moving again. So I just left the heart center and uh, hoping to get there um, anytime soon. I, ha I have a stable job here. I am a cardiologist and I have established my practice here. Uh, but I think looking at uh, us being a family, I will give um, it a chance first. I can go on and leave first and then we'll see. Ultimately, it's, it's a dynamic we have to work with because um, um, at the end of the day, we're a family and uh, we have to uh, sort of define where we stand and, and we have to uh, sort of uh, work things out on our own.